for the last couple of days and well kind of weeks actually we've been looking at artificial intelligence and how we can solve many puzzles and uninformed puzzles informed puzzles even last time we solved a diversal puzzle as we have an arbitrary and we take need to take it down pretty much so very interesting things um well or artificial intelligence. But one point that is very interesting, even though we explored uniform search, inform search, and adversary search, there's something that we haven't we have until to explore that being well knowledge. Knowledge is well something very common and very obvious for us. Knowledge is we see for example, knowledge of a book can bring us uh, information inside, pretty much. But how does artificial intelligence pounder, or better yet, how artificial intelligence can gather intelligence, or in this case, knowledge, and use this knowledge to compare it to itself and to pounder about it? So, like statements, for example, uh, as you would take information. And with the information it has, it will use itself, I mean, parts of the information to try to, for example, compare the information, see if it's legit or not, given its knowledge. And so, there are the knowledge-based agents. Agents that reason by operating on internal representations of knowledge. This pretty much means that the agent or artificial intelligence by operating internal representations, meaning, well, internal information of knowledge, or things like statements, for example, or the information in general. Now, I say this to you because it's very important. Actually, if I'm not wrong, I, I may be, I didn't find a specific study. But this is very important for artificial intelligence as it is one of the most used things in artificial intelligence, comparing things to each other. And for example, the last time we saw puzzles and games, they are fun. And of course, not just them, there are many other uh, uses for that. They are not that direct. But one great use is that you don't need to find something specific. You need to compare two things and see if they make sense. Or, for example, uh, grammar, grammar correction or correct, uh, corrections in general, artificial intelligence. They need to understand the whole context and they need to see if something is right or wrong. And so, I want to show it to you exactly how this would possibly work at least. Let's see in this state. If it wasn't cold, I visit McDonald's. Okay, I visit McDonald's or a cacao show. One of those holes on rare. It's I think mostly Brazilian, if not 100% Brazilian, a company that sells chocolate. The translation would be cocoa. So chocolate. I would buy either a hamburger or a chocolate today, but not both. So I visit McDonald's or cacao show. Today, but not cold. I visit Calco Show today. Now, two of these importance may perhaps, what can I say, uh, seem a little bit uh, too obvious, which is if it wasn't cold, it was McDonald's. Uh, pretty much meaning uh, there are more than meets the eye because, well, by these two statements, and I also say I did not visit McDonald's today, and it was cold today. This inside this information, beside uh, these three things, these three statements, I define that well two more informations, which is I did not visit McDonald's today, and it was cold today. Now, very interesting. But how does an artificial intelligence see it? Or better yet, how can we see it first? And you have a better way pretty much to understand it. Well, we need to interpret logic here. And pretty much we need to interpret logic to an artificial intelligence. 
They don't challenge me, uh, challenge me cha test. Or kind of, at least. I mean, math is pure logic and computers, and of course, because of that, artificial intelligence runs on math. But it's interesting that the normal logic we see isn't, well, common behavior of artificial intelligence, of course. No, it all depends on your program, anyway. Let's, for example, say I want to interpret a sentence. Now, a sentence is a kind of different a meaning in artificial intelligence, meaning here an assertion about the world in a knowledge representation language. Well, pretty much meaning something. And yes, I would say it means information. Sentence is an information. For what I understand here, my sentence could be I would visit McDonald's today if it wasn't cold. This is, an, this is a sentence. I would use the bathroom if I wanted to. This is a sentence, for example. Um, so pretty much meaning knowledge. A, or knowledge, or better yet, not just knowledge, but things. Really not immaterial, but I think knowledge is actually a good term. And we need to understand of a type of logic specific to represent this. So here on, on the propositional uh, logic, we have a way to symbolize a well something in general logic in this case. So we have two three symbols here. Those are letters just to represent. I don't think for what I understood. Those letters here don't represent something. They could be anything. Could be A, B, and C. Um, I don't know. A, B, X, and Z, uh, Z or Z. Well, it could be anything really. But in this case, we're just using this. But now, the something that does matter is these symbols. Now, these symbols are very important because they tell us what they mean. Or in this case, these are symbols of comparison. So these are, or not exactly, you understand. So I have the symbol of not, and, or implication, and by definition. Not meaning I'm negating something, and meaning that this and this is, for example, true. This, uh, this and or, in this case, this or this is true. Implication meaning there are some how correlated. And by conditional is that the correlation or the implication of one also affects the other. Let's see. Well, a little, um, this little something here to show what I mean. Now, not could have in two implications, which is not really. It pretty much reverses the step the statement. So, for example. This, if you put in mathematical terms, this is pretty much inverting the symbols or invading, inverting the values. So, in this case, for example, if I have 10 and I invert it, uh, it not in the well, a, a grammar sense, which would be 1 or 0, 1, but more in the mathematical terms, which would be minus 10. Pretty much mean this in mathematical terms. So, for example, a false statement, if I put the not here, then it becomes a true statement. Because, well, I inverted it and now it's true. And a true statement becomes, becomes false here with the not point because, well, it's false. It's not true. In this case, it would be not false. And it's very interesting because. If you would represent this, then it could be, for example, a my dream are not false, for example. It could mean something like that. And it's very interesting indeed how it could be put with a logic. Now, we have not, but we also have other things, for example, and. And it's very interesting and because, well, it, well, unites. Statements. For example, a statement that is false, for example, P and Q, 
both are false. So P and Q, and Q in this case, is false. Um, P and Q, but Q is true, is also false. If one is false, then it does not matter the position order, because we are comparing both at the same time. So if one are if one if one is false, then every then the whole statement is false. Uh, you can imagine like putting words word word words, <laughs> and in these words we have something wrong. For example, let's say that uh, I don't know. We I'm trying to think of something. Uh, you could say, for example, that. I'm trying to think of something here, but let's say you could say that most cats aren't uh, two meters or about what seven feet. You could say that uh, it would be a right statement, the average. But if you say that most cats are taller than, or for example, are uh, longer than seven feet, then it's a wrong statement. But if I put something in effect of both, then it would be still be a, a false statement. So it's pretty much like this. I take one thing, uh, I take two false things, and I combine them, they still vice, false. If I combine one false thing and a true thing, it will be false again. The only reason or the only way something in the end condition is, well, true, it's supposed to true. So if P and Q is true, so P or in this case true and true is equal to true. Interesting. What happens if I well looking the other way? Here for, for example in the or a, we are looking at something very interesting because we are not comparing neither pretty much we are not even putting it together. I mean we are but at least here in this case, in the R case, uh, it doesn't look like it. It is, but it's kind of weird. Because if we take, for example, everything here is false, for example, it's still false anyway. But in the case of R, or, or uh, you could say, for example, false or true. Well, true it could be anywhere. It could be in any way you want. In this case, in this case, the statement is true because there is a true point. So P or Q equals pretty much true if Q or P is true. And the only ones, only one needs to be true in any, any way. In this case, pretty much. So like the last time, which most were false, these most are true statements. Now the implication is very interesting because the implication pretty much uh, can I say implies something. This is obvious, but what do I mean by that is well, you will see. I mean, explaining would be bad. If false implies a false statement, then this statement is true. So false implying false is a true statement. Now, if false implies true statement, it's also true, because, again, it's true. But if a true statement is implying a false one, it's a false statement, because you were implying on something that is false. Uh, a false thing could be implying something that is true, but if you try to uh, impl implicate something, something true with something false, then you, you pretty much destroy your your argument, or in this case, your uh, situation here, your logic. So it wouldn't make sense. But a true thing can also imply true. Now, the very interesting one is the bicondition, because they need both to be equal, meaning a false statement can only biconditionally imply a false statement to be, to be a true statement. Meaning, they both need to be the same. So, a false statement, biconditionally, 
implying a false statement is a true statement. And a true statement, by conditionally implying a true statement, is also true. But it cannot be like a false and a true or true and a false. It cannot be like that. Because, well, you're trying to by conditionally imply something is equal to something. For example, false is equal to true, but it's not the case. So it is false. A false statement. Very interesting, really. Uh, because. You could put more situations, and I think actually that's pretty much the point, into something like that. And, well, I can show you that. And we can show you that pretty much by assigning a model. Well, a model is very interesting, assigning of a true value to every propositional symbol. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, for example, in a, in a model, I could say that P equals it is cold and Q equals it is a Thursday. Tuesday. Now, with this, I can say that, for example, uh, P is true and Q is false. Now, just here, here is just like for the building. This, this does not mean this does not mean nothing. I'm sorry. This does not mean nothing. But what does mean something is if I use a knowledge base because those are knowledge knowledge base. I, for example, here, um, uh, the knowledge base pretty much implies something is equal to something. So, in this case, I pretty much link, for example, uh, if I link in that a cut hurts them, well, every time I get hurt, and I remember that I get cut, it's, well, it's going to be hurt, for example, it was going to hurt, for example. Oh, let's see an inference. Uh, inference is pretty much you using your knowledge to build knowledge. Sounds weird, but if you show me, for example, this, I think this will be probably more, uh, a little bit more logical. So in this key situation, P equals it is a Tuesday, Q equals it is cold, and R is I will go see a movie. Now, in this situation, my knowledge base is that P or, or not Q implies R, meaning if it is a Tuesday or it is cold, I will see a movie. Meaning, one of these two, in this case, since I am actually not, I'm not comparing, sorry, not only I remember, it's kind of tricky, you need to get a QC2 and I try to. But this actually implies and. So if it is a Tuesday and it is cold, then I will see a move. Uh, the inference here is pretty much the end result. So, well, I with this statement that P and not Q equals, oh, uh, sorry, uh, implies R, that means, again, means in state. If it is a Tuesday and it's not cold, then I will see a movie. Uh, so if I try to read it online, it's P and not Q implies R. Very interesting indeed because that's pretty much not how artificial intelligence could see, because artificial intelligence could see probably math, you could see something, uh, pure math, uh, you know, kind of difficult, kind of ridiculous. Uh, but well, it would be, if I would say a vision, it would be more like that. Because it's a nice way to imply something that looks ma mathematical, at least, into logic. So, well, that's what we have here today. And if you did like it, please like and subscribe. Subscribe and, of course, hit the notification bell. Because then you will be able to see my next video. And if you understand this better, you can see the last ones. Though we are starting a reasonably different topic, it will build on the information of the last ones. So, I think it's very interesting to that. So, I think that's it for today. Hope you like it. Like this video, comment down below, share this video for people who think you like it, and see you tomorrow. Bye!